Hey guys, back with the 840s. They've had a thorough cleaning. Radius on the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust is textured except for the right off the seat, which is a uh, rough polish. The uh, intake is given my light burr finish. Chamber is my light burr finish. The intake valve got a back cut. We got a nice swath across, of liquid across that. We've got some splatters on the exhaust. We got a nice wide path. You can even see a little bit on the center of the cylinder side. I think it looks all right. It definitely changed in the chamber, but I also changed the shape of that chamber a little bit. You'll have to go back in the other video and take a look. Uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of splash on the exhaust side. Quite a bit. Let's take a look at the bore. Okay, the bore's got an interesting design. I think it looks good. you got to remember it's 24 degree ahead, so the valve is stood up a lot in the port. So that's going to change the way our liquid flows. Okay, this is an important point. You know, they're canted. Notice how much those valves overlap. Yeah, I've got them sticking up the width of a washer. But you can really see the angle that they're on as far as the chamber is designed. Right? It's nice because as it opens, it moves away from the bore. It's a much more difficult machining process when they make it and design it. Is it as good as a Hemi? No. But it's a step towards a Hemi. They also call it a semi-Hemi. Right? Okay, down its throat it doesn't really look that much different than last time you saw it. And we do have a higher angle on our blue. You can still see I left that boss in. I straightened the uh, cylinder wall out a little bit, but it's nowhere near that bolt boss. In reality, you could break right through that bolt boss and just leave it broken if you wanted to. But remember, this is the good port. This is probably going to flow more than the bad port anyway, so I don't know if you really want to do that. All right, short side got a little bit of work, really not more than a cleanup. Removed that cut, did not make it wider, did not do any layback or anything like that. This really kind of like a serious cleanup. Okay. And I did have to watch for casting thickness. I mean, it's a big block. Everything on it is really thick, but it had ancient Charlie porting on it. So it's a good thing I checked because on the exhausts, let me show you. Okay, you can see the exhaust, but right over here, right where it comes from being solid to uh, divided, it's only like 150 thousandths thick, which is plenty thick enough, but I'm glad I didn't just go in there and uh, arbitrarily just grind it out, because that probably would have been a bad day. Other than that, most of, most of these ports are a quarter of an inch thick, still. Okay, a little bit different view of the port. You can see it's basically textured, except for the floor of the short side and the radius going to the valve. Another thing that's interesting is on, on the short side, let's see if I can get that view. They put really, really big bulges on both sides. And you have to be careful. You can't just knock them out because they will get thin. But I did, did take a decent amount of metal off of the both of those bulges. I didn't really think they helped anything. We'll find out when we do the exhaust flows if I was right. Okay, as far as the exhaust, you have to be careful. There is water under here, so don't... I had one guy that sent me a chunk of head, Bob, a while, many years ago. 
I did a thread uh, on it on Speed Talk. He sent me an 049 head, which is very similar to a 781, but I think it has a different chamber shape. It's more opened up. And he made this really sharp right here and really scalloped it out. It flowed really well, but it was paper thin. In fact, I took that fin off to see if it uh, improved flow, and it went right through. It didn't matter. It was a half a head anyway. It was, for, uh, it was for development and research. The other part is this boss relief. I took this down pretty good. You could probably take it completely out, but it would leave it very, very thin. That is actually something else that I do not like about big blocks, is a lot of that exhaust port doesn't have any water jacket around it. Does that really matter in the big scheme of things? I don't know. I like the way a small block's designed. I like the water jacket all the way around it. I'm really not interested in seeing, you know, iron glow on the outside while it's running. Okay, you can see it's basically a cleanup. We still even have a paste ooze line. Because that wall is not really as thick as I would like, so I'm not taking a huge amount of metal out of it. You can see I forgot to even get around that uh, bolt boss where the uh, rocker stud goes through, but no big deal. I didn't t take a tiny burr and go all the way around the guide to make it, you know, very pretty. Okay, of course, while I was doing this, my little brain is, is working on whether I should take a piece out of this. I don't think I'm going to. But, I do think I'm going to take a piece out of this and have it roll into the exhaust edge. I guess it would figure on, you know what, after we do all the flows, you guys can do a little homework on the exhaust to intake ratio and tell me whether we need to uh, boost up the intake or boost up the exhaust from where we are now. Okay, guys, this is kind of interesting. So, on the right is the 90s porting, 219, no back cut. This is modern cleanup, 219, with a back cut. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. How'd we do? Plus, 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 plus. It looks pretty good, right? I made a mistake last flow sheet. I put 371 at 700. It was supposed to be at 600. These are Eric Weingartner's numbers from Rectangular Port AFRs. So you can compare them to these. You know, not, we're not bad there. We're not bad there. We start to lose. We start to lose a lot. We start to lose a lot more. Now, First of all, they're AFRs. Second, they've been worked over by Eric. I would expect them to be better. But still, we got a nice pickup. You know, let's take a look at uh, 400. You know, from 267 and change to 179 and change. 500, we went from 299.1 to 320. That's a huge pickup. 325.8 to 342.6 okay so we'll be able to uh, test that intake manifold pretty decent um, that's basically what, what we're working on that intake should be in the mail soon if we take a look at the swirls they really took off I only got two minuses the rest of the swirls are way higher now that's kind of Let's take a look. Take a look at the angle that that port is to the chamber. Okay, if we use the pointer like uh, Tom tells us to do, this is the angle that that port is entering the chamber at. Now let's do the same thing for the bad port, and you'll see the big difference. Okay, huge difference in the angle that they're entering the bore at, right? 
It's very interesting when you think of it from an engineering point of view. What were they thinking of doing? Well, there's no question that this runner design is going to have more swirl, right? And it does. It's also going to have, because the angle of the air, more of the fuel charge has a chance to get out of the exhaust. It's an interesting thought, right? This one, and more like a Ford, hits that wall some more, possibly breaking up the fuel better. And I think I read somewhere that this actually uses, because of the way it's designed, it uses the fuel a little better. So, in reality, do they make that much difference as far as horsepower? I don't think it's that big a difference. I really don't. Okay, let's take a look at our air speeds. This is 90s porting, no back cut. These here versus these. Okay, so these pluses and minuses are in reference to those. Pinch got a little bit faster. They were both at 0.6 lift, so you got plus, plus, minus. Not that big a difference, but this is moving more air. Okay, as far as the roof, we came up quite a bit on the center of the cylinder side. The uh, cylinder wall side stayed almost exactly the same. And on our short side, we changed. We, we lost quite a bit here. We gained quite a bit here. Lost a little bit in the, uh, in the center. Okay, but it's also moving more air. Now, let's compare our exhaust ports. Okay, 90s porting modern porting and remember it's mostly a cleanup i didn't i didn't go through and check all the air speeds and uh, do my usual thing i just cleaned it up i took some of those lumps and bumps out especially on the short side radius and since it's already a giant port i really don't want to take out much metal out of it so i tried to just kind of fix what was already there how did i do well I don't see any negatives on that, so I'm going to say we step in the right direction. Is it good? You guys can do your uh, exhaust ratio to intake ratio, and you can let me know. With a 2-inch pipe, we're not bad. We you know 227, 243, 252. Uh, certainly better than where we were. Okay? The valve hasn't been touched at all. It's exactly the same completely stock 188 valve. Let's take a look at our air speeds and see if they look any better. Okay, 90s porting, air speeds on top. Clean up on the bottom. It doesn't look good as far as the minuses and pluses. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, uh, the 90s one was more even across the top. It was really even in the middle. And it was pretty even on the bottom. And yet, one port, this is measured at 600, one port's moving 202, and the other port's moving 224.7. I don't really have an answer, guys. <laughs> the air speeds don't look great, but it moves a bunch more air, so I'm going to take it as a win. Now, does that mean... You know, could I work on the air speeds? I probably could, but it would also depend how much power the guy that finally gets these wants to make. You know, why don't you guys do a, a quick estimate of where they are now on that port? And uh, hopefully I have another day to do the, the bed port. The exhausts are all done on this head. So that's one thing nice about big blocks is... In reality, all the exhaust ports are the same, except one has a hole in it for the exhaust crossover. So you only have two exhaust designs to figure out. And really, they're not that much different. You really have to watch the casting thickness because the port with the exhaust crossover, let's look at it. 
Okay, you can see the big hole it has where it goes through the intake manifold and out. Uh, actually, it goes, it goes from this port through the intake manifold to heat the intake manifold up and out the exhaust port on the other side of the engine. But you can see, you can really get the, the shape fairly close, except for that hole. Now I've been asked a million times whether it's worth closing that hole. I would think on an all-out setup, yeah, fill that with liquid aluminum and, uh, and go at it. Most stuff is not really going to see a difference, I don't think, because like a good single plane is going to have that blocked off anyway. And it really doesn't seem to affect the flow that much. So let's compare this port to one that doesn't have a hole in it, so you can see. Okay, no hole in that one. All right, guys, I think I'm done with these. Uh, well, tonight, anyway. Uh, let me know how we did so far, and uh, what else you think I need to do to these. You can see they're not... Like that throat radius isn't perfect, but it's all right. It's good enough for testing for now. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.